Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kidi. The Prime Minister of the Republic of Uganda was invited to come and open this very important conference. Unfortunately, he wrote back to say he had other very important engagements elsewhere. So he asked me to step in for him. Your Excellency, the Ambassador of Ireland to Uganda, the Vice Chancellor of Makere University, the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Water and Environment, the Chairperson of the least, de can of the least developed country negotiators, honorable members of Parliament, officials from the International Institute for Environment and Development, conference sponsors, distinguished conference delegates, the members of the media, ladies, and the gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure and honor to officiate at the opening session of this 11th International Conference on Community-Based Adaptation that is being held here in Uganda for the first time. Let me start by welcoming all the delegates to this conference and in a very special way the international delegates who have traveled miles and miles to come and participate in this conference. I would also like to welcome back those delegates who participated in the conference field trips. I hope the field trips provided you with an opportunity to see parts of rural Uganda, but more importantly, witness the challenges our rural communities are experiencing as a result of impacts of climate change and the efforts they are engaged in to adapt at the community level. Ladies and gentlemen, climate change poses the greatest threat to development, not only in Uganda, but in almost all the developing countries and the entire globe in general. There is no longer any doubt that the, glo the global climate system is changing. The latest scientific information given by the fifth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change indicates that there is 95% certainty that climate change is caused by human beings and that global warming poses serious development and environmental problems with far-reaching social and economic consequences. The very existence of communities in the countries like Uganda is particularly threatened by erosion of their natural resource capital by the impacts of climate change. I therefore applaud the International Institute for Environment and Development and the organizers of the community-based adaptation conferences for taking the initiative to mobilize policy and decision makers, academicians, researchers, and the climate change adaptation practitioners to discuss this important subject area that focuses on empowering communities to use their own knowledge and the decision-making processes to take action on climate change. The theme of this conference is harnessing natural resources and ecosystems for adaptation. This theme is directly relevant to Uganda, whose economy and the livelihood of Han rural communities largely depends on its natural resources and especially the climate. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am informed that the program for CPA 2 conf 11 conference has been designed to enhance the capacity of practitioners 
government and the donors to scale up and support community-based adaptation. I therefore challenge the district delegates to come up with practical solutions on climate change adaptation that can be embraced and adopted by the vulnerable communities who live in the rural areas in Uganda and the least developed countries. Ladies and gentlemen, Uganda has in the past decades witnessed numerous extreme climate events. Different parts of Uganda have experienced record-breaking occurrence of floods, prolonged drought, and erratic rainfall patterns. The worst impacts are on those with the least resilience and the adaptive capacity. Uganda's capacity to help the affected, especially the local communities, to cope is very limited. This is compounded by the fact that Uganda's economy is heavily dependent on natural resources. Attainment of the country's socio-economic development goals are spelled out in the Uganda Vision 2040 and the National Development Plan are therefore being curtailed. The mountain ecosystems like Mount Renzori Ranges, Mount Elegon Region, and the Mohavura are of national importance with respect to biodiversity and tourism. The glaciers on Mount Renzori have been melting at an alarming rate affecting water availability and the country's tourist potential. The warming of the mountain areas have drastically affected wildlife species. For instance, the mountain gorillas in southwestern Uganda are under threat, as are the Wensori leopard and the Wensori red breaker, since they usually live at altitudes of above 3,000 meters. Unique species of chameleon found on mountains are also under threat, including the three-horned chameleon, whose range is shifting upwards as a result of rising temperatures. The dwindling of wildlife will affect tourism, a leading foreign exchange honor for Uganda. The landslides and the floods, which occurred in the Wenzori Mountains, have led to loss of fertile soil due to erosion and an increase in the displacement of people, as was the case in Kasese in 2013 and 2014. Other climate-related events are also having significant short and long-term effects on the lakes, wetlands, rivers, and other types of ecosystems, which in turn are impacting on the constituent biodiversity. For instance, in the dry land areas such as Nakasongora, where some of you went on a field trip, flooding due to climate-related events has impacted negatively on the lake shore by biodiversity, including the wetlands and the shrunk the fish breeding grounds. The agriculture sector is a fundamental to the Uganda economy, employing about 66% of the working population and contributing about 23.1% to total GDP. The vulnerability assessment of the agriculture sector in Uganda reveals that agriculture is highly vulnerable to climate change, and the national food supply, supply relies on adaptation that is successful. The low level of income, high poverty levels, and high population is affecting the ability of most households to adapt to climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Climate change is all encompassing threat. It is a threat to our security, a threat to our health, and our sources of fresh water and our food, and the challenges our very own survival and existence. And above all, in a country like Uganda and the other least developed countries, the impacts of climate change are felt mostly by the vulnerable communities who live in the rural areas and constitute the majority of the population and yet they are also the backbone of the economy. In spite of the above challenges, Uganda, like other developing countries, has taken strides both at policy and at strategic levels to come up with responses to promote community-based adaptation to climate change. Some of these actions which have been taken include, one, in response to urgent and immediate requirement for the country to address climate change, Uganda developed the National Adaptation Program of Actions in 2007 with nine priority interventions focused on two broader aspects of institutional strengthening and community-based adaptation. The Ministry of Water and the Environment spearheaded the development of the National Climate Change Policy and it is costed implementation strategy which were adopted by government in 2015. The policy and the discussed implementation strategy serve as the guiding framework for handling climate change in the country across all sectors. The policy recognizes the importance of promoting community and ecosystem resilience to adverse impacts of climate change. Uganda also developed and submitted it is intended national determined contribution to the UNFCCC, which was Uganda's contribution to the Paris Climate Change Agreement, which Uganda has ratified. Uganda has now turned this intended national determined contributions into a national determined contribution and is set to implement it. Uganda's NDCs recognizes ecosystem-based adaptation and the community-based adaptation as an important pillars in the building resilience. Uganda has also developed a green growth development strategy which aims at promoting a green economy with the building climate resilience, promoting a low carbon development, and environmental sustainability, sustainability as important pillars is Uganda's journey to sustainable development. By doing so, Uganda joins the rest of the world in its commitment to achieve global sustainable development goals. Furthermore, the government of Uganda, with financial support from the Climate Investment Funds, have finalized and secured an approval of Uganda's strategic program for climate resilience by the CIF pilot program for climate resilience. The eight-year program is focused on community adaptation and resilience, building through five identified investment areas such as climate resilience, aquaculture, raw community resilience, urban resilience, and infrastructure, hydrometeorological services, and the strengthening institutional capacity for climate change coordination. The next step in this process is the elaboration of five investment areas into bankable projects for CIF funding. Green Climate Change Fund, Adaptation Fund, Global Environment Facility and the other bilateral and multilateral donor funding. Country, currently, the country in the process of drafting 
drafting the National Climate Change Bill following the recent approval of the principles of the bill by the Cabinet of Uganda. This will help to strengthen the implementation of national climate change policy and a strategy and are not only designed for promoting community-based adaptation resilience prevention, but also for enhancing mitigation efforts to meet international goals and the national determined contributions. Finally, finally, let me once again take this opportunity to thank the organizers of this conference and more specifically Makere University and my own Minister of Water and the Environment who have contributed both financially and in terms of human resources to ensure that this conference takes place. I would also like to thank the development partners, civil society, and of all the organizations that have sponsored delegates to participate in this conference. It is now my singular honor to officially open the definite international conference on community-based adaptation and to wish you fruitful and productive deliberations. In Uganda, we normally say for God and my country, but I think I will borrow a statement from Macron. Let us make our planet great again. Thank you very much.